Hey guys, what's going on? It's Kodiak here, and today we are checking out the brand new Star Wars Battlefront 2 map, Ajan Kloss. We are playing as the Resistance. Now, this is the first time I've actually dove into this map. It was added to the rotation today, December 20th. So I'm really excited to check this one out. This is in co-op and heroes versus villains only. So you have to jump into those game modes if you want to check out this map. And I'm really excited. I'm going to be showcasing both the Ovisian Gunner and the Kafix Spy in this. And holy moly, look at this. This is cool looking. So for anybody who hasn't seen the movie, there is a small spoiler here. Um, the Ajan Kloss is like kind of the equivalent to Endor, right? So it's where the Resistance have their base. And I'm playing as the officer just to start off ads. I'm trying to get better with the officer, kind of that um, you know more precision gunfire stuff. And right off the bat, we're running into enemies here, which is kind of strange. It's a very big open space, and that's actually, I think, the first thing that I notice about this map is that it's not constricted. You would think a jungle would be very tight, and you'd have a lot of um, brush and things restricting you, but to be honest, it's pretty open. And uh, nice shot there for me, if I do say so myself, taking out that guy. And we're covering three different bases here in this very big open area. And that is going to be a huge challenge. Now, of course, playing... Oh, here we got a bunch of enemies here. Throw a little grenade. Maybe get a couple kills. There we go. All right. So we, we have three defense points that we have to maintain in this wide open area. It does seem like the First Order spawns relatively close to these points. So this is going to be really challenging, I think, across the board. And if you look... This whole right side here is actually um, off limits. So this is kind of the end of the map. The A point is right next to the edge of the map. And the cool thing I've noticed about this map too is there's actually a lot of verticality, but it's subtle verticality. As you notice there, there's kind of like a little lip, and that gives you the high ground over your enemy, which you don't think really matters in a game like this, but it does. There is definitely a perspective um, thing that plays into you know, your advantage on the battlefield. So there's these little channels that run through the whole map. You've got those little cliff, uh, tiny little cliff heads. I don't even know what you would call them. Uh, little plateaus, mini plateaus, if you will. So we've already lost this first phase here. So we're going to fall back. we got 40 seconds to fall back. Um, back up the hill. And oh, look at that. I think that's a cruiser in a mountain. It looks like one of the uh, the resistance cruisers there. I don't know if that's a bay. Oh, yeah. So it's like it's hangered in the mountain. That's really cool. So we're back up to this point, and this is just as open as the first point. We do have this kind of rock uh, feature here on the right side, which may provide us some cover. It doesn't look like we can get up it, but at least it'll provide us some cover. And then over there on the left, we've got the B point, and there's another cliff face on the left there. But it's hard to see where guys are going to be coming right off the bat. They do have to move up the hill, which is going to be a challenge for them. But, you know, strength in numbers. This is a cool little spot to snipe from uh, if I could actually hit anything. If you know anything about me, I'm not the most accurate fella when it comes to first-person games. A couple of nice shots there. There we go. We get a kill. So, yeah. Oh, and here we go. Guys, right up in our grill. They came up along that tree line there and just totally destroyed us. Uh, we're going to check out the Kafix Spy next since we got the points. I'll show you what this guy does. He's a really fun class. Think of him as like a step down from Han Solo. He's got a really strong semi-automatic blaster that he can use one of his abilities to turn it into an automatic blaster for a very brief amount of time, but it does a ton of damage. He's really, really fun. He's also got his orbital bombardment ability, which is he'll throw a grenade out there. It'll target... Um, and let you know how many enemies are within the cone. And then, let's see if I uh, if I can get one off here. All right, so there's the toss. On the bottom right, you'll see, okay, we got four or five guys targeted. We hit it again, and I'm getting shot, so give me one second here. So the orbital bombardment's going off. You can see all the smoke there. It hit a bunch of guys. I think we got at least one from that. It's a really cool ability. You can only use that outside, though, which does limit it a little bit. It still acts as a good way to target enemies. Its other kind of component to it is that when you throw it, it will highlight any enemies around. Uh, there, I'm getting my butt kicked again. But it will target any enemies around, give you like a little bit of a snapshot of who's closest or, you know, who's hiding behind cover, things like that. So it's kind of cool. Um, we'll, we'll play the KFX Spy one more time here, see if we can get a little bit more gameplay for you guys. But he is a really fun class to play. I do love the Han Solo vibe. I've never been great at it, but it's a great way to play that Han Solo type character in this game mode, check out the new map, things like that. So the KFX Spy is really, really fun. And as you can see, we're actually just getting pushed back and back. And oh, we can use this left whole left side hill. The enemies are taking great advantage of that right now. And let's see if I can do it. I'm going to use my melee ability there. Take him out. We got a guy hiding behind the tree here. And there we go. Okay. So I'm hurting. We're getting pushed back. We've only got two points to defend. And we're not doing a great job defending them. Um, 
There we go. It's starting to get my health back here. I'm going to use this little outcropping here. It's a good little sniping spot if you like to snipe. Um, if you get pushed back, you can hop up there and, and snipe from up there. But um, we're going to toss another orbital, see if we can get a hit. I don't think we're going to get any. I think we're a little too short. But it is a cool little sniping spot. But it, again, there's the difference between cover and concealment in a map like this, right? There's plenty of cover. Sorry, there's plenty of concealment, not a lot of cover. You have to hide behind a tree or a stump or something like that. There's plenty of bushes you can hide in, but that's not cover, that's concealment, which means you're visibly hidden from the enemies, but you're not protected from blaster fire and things like that. So you have to be careful when you're playing in an open map like this. As you can see, I'm, uh, you know, I'm clearly playing against computers, so it's not a big deal. But as a general rule of thumb, you don't want to be out in the open trying to attack enemies because you're just a sitting duck standing out there with no cover no concealment it's a very simple concept but a really important one and, and you'll notice if you ever watch like really high-end players um, take a crack at games like this they're using cover and concealment all the time 100 percent of the time they're either in cover or concealment or moving quickly between the two. Oh, we got a flamethrower guy and i knew that was going to happen flamethrower guys oh, are the, heavy, the, awesome. the bane of my existence in this game just so challenging to deal with all the time I don't know what it is about them. I just struggle with them. I can never use them, but I struggle to fight them. So we're going to do one more set here. And look at this. We actually get put on this nice little outcropping here. And it's a great sniping spot. You can see just took out that guy there. We got guys coming from every angle. I don't know if we're going to be able to pick them all off. And we're already forced back. So we're going to fall back once more. Um, we got one of the Sith Trooper characters there. You can see with the bright red armor. Very cool character doing a full video on him shortly you will see that one in the feed if you're interested and we're actually going back into the mountain it looks like under the cruiser and this may be our last defense no we've got two more places we can defend um, this one is kind of the entrance of the the cave and then i would imagine one that's further back in the cave so we're up here this is a really cool spot i mean you can see everything coming from a mile away which is really really neat again this is a good sniper spot it's it's a long shot so Trying to hit these pot shots is a little challenging. Um, let's see if we can get some with an orbital bombardment here. We got two selected now. Three, four, five, six, and we'll probably hit it there. Let's see. We'll probably get a couple hits there. At least a couple hits. Maybe no kills. Yeah, a bunch of hits. Oh, there we got a kill. So that's cool. And you can see all the enemies. You see all of them. They're white outlines. They're coming up this hill like, I don't even know, like ants on... A birthday cake is that a good analogy i don't know we got kylo ren here let's see if kfix can do anything against kylo ren we do have a ray here it looks like ray's about to die and let's see if we and we can take him out good so again strong blaster ability again of course we're playing against computers so nothing to really write home about here but it's it's interesting to see how this map is progressing right we had that wide open first area and then we kind of had the two strong points as the the funnels kind of got a little more narrow and up here in the third point, the funnel is getting even more narrow. These guys have to come up the hill. Very much a D-Day Normandy type situation, right? They're kind of storming uphill, trying to take a fortified position. It's a really interesting concept to see kind of play out in Star Wars Battlefront 2. We've got a huge set of enemies right here. We switched into our fast blaster. We got a couple kills there, but we are hurting. And that's probably going to be it for the K-Fix Spy Let's see. Should we switch it up to the uh, Vissian Gunner? This guy is really cool. We're going to do a whole video on him as well. Not my favorite character, and I'll tell you why. He's really a one-trick pony. Having a minigun is cool, but the, um, I don't know, the, the charm of it kind of wears off after a few minutes. It is an absolute machine. I mean, just look at it. It's spitting out bullets left and right, and it does a lot of damage. The thing is, though, the rest of the kit... That there's nothing. I mean, you have the ability to do an instant cooldown of the weapon and some basically leech on the character. But other than that, there's not much. You, now, you can switch it over to a secondary mode, and this is like an anti-tank mode, but it's not very useful in co-op. I just switched over to it here. I'm going to show you what it looks like. It's cool. It looks like a rocket launcher. But the thing is, it doesn't do any damage against infantry. It doesn't do a lot of damage, I should say, against infantry. It does do damage, but not a lot. So it's pretty useless in a co-op sense. Um, it's really good against turrets and and shields and things like that. But it's it's not worth taking the time to smack your gun, switch it over, and kind of deal with it there. So the Ovisian Gunner, he's a cool character. We're going to do a full video on him, like I said. And look at that. We got pushed back to the last point. We are as deep in the cave as we can get. Cool little outcove here. Like all the resistance stuff, a bed. 
it's pretty cool. And, and again, I don't want to spoil anything from the movie, but you will see this environment in the movie. So it's really neat. And I mean, it's just a, it's a sprawling area with lots of little crab crevices and caves and offshoots. And now we're in that last stand feeling here. The Ovisian Gunner is probably the best character you could play in this type of environment where there's a million guys. I uh, tried to use my charge ability there. did not work. So let's just start mowing things down. And hopefully... Oh, I'm going to die. Yeah, so this is the thing with the Ovisian Gunner. Uh, I got a little too brazen, which is how you get with a minigun in your hand, right? You think you're unstoppable with a minigun. He's a, he's a enforcer. He's got a little weight to him, but he's not invulnerable. Um, even when you activate your E ability, you're not invulnerable, and I will do it here, and I'll still get killed, I think, because I'm so low. You can see I'm pulling in the leech, but it's still not enough to take down a Captain Phasma, who is a beast in her own right. So, let's try this for the third time with the Ovisian Gunner, and let's see if we can actually get you some quality gameplay, killing enemies, and showing really what his strength is. So, we're going to pop it right off the bat. This is going to instantly cool the weapon. It's going to basically allow me to free fire for... A period of time. We've got a nice clumping of enemies here. We're just mowing things down. This is the Ovisian Gunner to a T. Now, one of the challenges with the Ovisian Gunner is when you have to expend your heat, the window to do that is a lot further down on, you can see there, it's like two-thirds of the way down on the bar, and that's really a pain when you're up against a horde like this. Now, this is not how it's standard. Um, like, if you were playing, like, Galactic Assault or Capital Supremacy, you don't see this many enemies coming at you at once. Co-op is really more of a horde mode than anything else. But it, it's something to think about when you choose the Ovisian Gunner because you do have a lot of damage potential, but there is a downtime when you're reloading where you're pretty much useless. It's a full second or, or second and a half that you're useless, and that's a big challenge. So we're, we're doing a decent job defending this, believe it or not. I mean, we're spawning right here, so I think that has something to do with it. There's no run back to this environment. We are mowing things down. We've died a few times, but we are mowing things down. It helps when they just pretty much run at the minigun. Um, but this is it. This is what I was talking about before, where the Ovisian Gunner is a one-trick pony. This is it. There's not a, a lot you can do with him. His F ability charge is pretty much useless. I mean, you don't want to get up close um, to some of the characters when you're playing the Ovisian Gunner. You're not a sniper, you're a medium range character, um, in my opinion. So getting close and, and using charge, there's no benefit to it. You're not really going to do much damage with it. You're really not going to change any sort of battle tide. So it's really more of just like if somebody gets close to you and you wanna knock them down for a second, you can use that. It's not great. But in terms of the map, getting back to the map for a second, this is a really cool part of the fight. There, You have to look at every angle here to make sure that you're not being overrun. And I don't know if you guys noticed what I just did there. I finished my heat, I had to expend the heat, I popped my E ability, and then boom, I get a full clip with the minigun again, and I'm just mowing things down. So that's kind of cool. That's how that ability is supposed to be used uh, when I actually do it right. So we're mowing things down, we're doing a good job defending the end of the cruiser here. We've got two minutes left to try and defend. I think we're gonna see at least two, if not three more waves of enemies come through this left side is really perilous, right? You're you're focused on the cruiser direction, and then all of a sudden you get two or three enemies that come this way. I'm going to use this wall as kind of help here. Uh, this would never work in an actual match. It'll work against computers, but it won't work in an actual match here. So we're just going to mow people down. We pop my E ability here, and I'm just, just, I mean, how many guys is that? Five, six, seven, something like that. Just absolutely wrecking them from a fortified position like that. So when in the right hands and the right circumstances, the Ovisian Gunner is very good. I think a lot of you guys will get some jo enjoyment out of it. I think you will enjoy playing the Ovisian Gunner. Uh, let's see if I can survive this. I think I went a little too deep here. Uh, I'm going to pop my E ability, get some health back. I don't know if it's going to be enough. It's not going to be enough. And nope, it's not enough. So <laughs> we'll switch it up here. Um, we will play Ray for a little bit. I don't play Ray at all. I'm probably going to get murked within like the first five seconds. I don't know her abilities. I don't play her. I'm not a huge Jedi fan. Like, I just don't like playing as a Jedi. Let's see if we can get Kylo Ren at least out of the battle. And of course, sorry, he was not paying attention to me at all. Look how many guys there are. I don't know what you do in a situation like this. I'm just defending. I'm still getting killed. Now I've got two flamethrower guys on me. I just don't even know what to do. There's just too many guys in a situation like this. The Jedi are, are best suited when you can kind of hide and run around cover and sneak attack people. They're so strong 
Um, but anyways, yeah, so that's my terrible attempt at playing Ray. We'll finish off the round. We got 40 seconds left. We'll finish it off with the KFX Spy. This is actually a really cool scenario to play the KFX Spy in. You can't use Orbital Bombardment, but you can paint targets, and then you can kind of sit back and try and snipe them. It's almost like fish in a barrel type of thing. But it's a good way to kind of build your skill up and, and get those skill shots out there. We've got Captain Phasma out there, I think, right now. And it's a good way to just kind of work on your aim. And that's something that I think everybody needs to work on all the time. And you can s safely do that in this environment because you can stay back, right? The, the minigunner, you can't really do that. Some of the other characters, you're not really able to do that. But the KFX Spy, because his abilities are so tailored to like a medium to long range... Uh, or his weapon, I should say. It's it's pretty good. So, I think we're going to be able to hold this one off. We're in overtime. It's chewing down. And yes, we were able to hold off the first order um, on this new map. It's a really cool map, guys. I highly recommend upgrading your game so you get kind of all of the perks that come with the refresh version of Battlefront 2. There's no more pay to win. Um, there's so many more skins, new characters, new heroes, new maps, new classes. It's a lot of fun. As always, guys, like and subscribe to the channel and the video if you want to see more Star Wars Battlefront 2 stuff in your feed. And as always, my name is Kodiak. And from everyone here at the Game Gurus, thanks for watching. Play on, and we will see you on the battlefield. Thanks for checking out the video. If you want to learn more about the game or just want to be part of an incredible video game community, join the Game Gurus on Discord. Be the first to know what's going on with the channel and interact with me and the rest of the team on a daily basis. To join, check out the link below.